My friend, are you ready to become the chairman? The one that once healed himself and now is ready to heal the world? friend to the most transformative podcast in the multiverse. This is the Mastermind Podcast Challenge Season 2 with your Oh, your favorite doctor, the Papacito from Puerto Rico, the Dr. Derek Israel, and this is the episode 500. 75 and I am fired because oh my gotchy the chaman archetype <laughs> I think that this is one of the best archetypes out there if you activate this archetype in your psyche in your unus mundus in consciousness in the world in the multiverse you will transform the whole thing because this is the archetype of healing. This is the archetype of transformation, and you are this archetype. So if you want to know more about archetypes, I have a whole reproduction list on my YouTube channel, Dr. Derek Israel, that is called Archetypes. And if you go there, you will be able uh, to see some episodes that I have of other archetypes. Some episodes are on, on Spanish, So my episodes are on English, but I have already discussed the magician, the lover, the warrior, the king, uh, the buffoon, uh, the wise man or the old wise. Um, so I yes, I have discussed and I will continue to discuss in the future more and more of the archetypes. So if you really like this subject, uh, go to my reproduction list. Also, before we continue moving forward with the podcast of today, Let me remind you that I open a new service that is called Spiritual Guru Service. And you can buy that service on DerekIsrael.com. And with that service, I will be attacking different spiritual problems that you may be facing. And if you want me to go one on one in a very immersive service with you for your spiritual benefit, consider uh booking that service with your doctor, Derek Israel. So very brief, what is an archetype? I like to do it in every episode because a lot of people, they don't know what is an archetype. Maybe they're interested in the chairman, but what the hell is the archetype? Well, the archetype is the template. I always explain archetypes differently, <laughs> but it's the same thing. The archetype is the template of energy that you need to have in order to express the chaman in you or through you. So chamans have been around since the beginning of human history, and today they're still around. And we call them neo or modern chamans. And if you start reading a lot of books about chamanism, that is basically the religion or the dogma or the study or the science behind a chaman, if you study chamanism, or you study some books, you will uh, read a lot about like how you can be a chaman in the modern days. Because you, when you think about a chaman, you think about an old guy in a tribe, in a cave, right? Back in the day, you know, before Christ, maybe. 
and you don't think about a guy that is in the computer uh, navigating the internet, but is also a shaman as well. So yes, you can be a shaman in the modern day. And hey, I am a shaman. I am. I am not like uh, that weird, right? Well, I am very weird, but I am not with the full beard and that old stereotype of what is a shaman. So you can be a shaman today if you know exactly what a shaman do. If you do that and therefore you activate the energy of the shaman in your body, that is the archetype. That is the activation of that energy. So exactly what is a shaman? Well, let's say that the shaman is a variation of the magical archetype. So I already discussed the magician. And I think that I discussed twice the magician. Yes, I discussed uh, the magician part one, both on our Spanish, on Spanish, part one and part two. And that is also the magician is a variation of the magical energy. The chaman is another variation, but there's more. For example, we have the medicine man that I will be discussing that in the future. That is also a variation of the magic uh Also, we have the witch. Most witch are women. So um, that is also a variation. Another variation, and this is very interesting, I will be excited to discuss this in the future as well, is the priest. You know, the priest, if you're watching my screen, the priest. And that is the Catholic variation of the chaman or the magical or the one that can control supernatural forces, but in the Catholic modern era. So, and a lot more. So notice the magical energy or the energy that can help you or permits you to manipulate reality with the power of consciousness because the chairman and the priest and the magician and the witch, they all know that reality is consciousness and consciousness is reality. So therefore, by stimulating and manipulating and engineering your psyche or your consciousness in a way using different methods, different paradigms, you know, the witch use different methods, the priest use the Bible, the cross, different methods, the holy water, the chaman use the psychedelics, uh, the totems of the animal spirits. So they use different methods, but they all do the same thing. And that is to manipulate the, their consciousness And, man, and by manipulating their consciousness, they can uh, create a certain effect in the world because the world is infinitely attached to their consciousness. Everything is one and they know that. This is how they have their power. This is magic. Magic is consciousness. Or more appropriately, the power of consciousness itself. That is magic. When you use consciousness with an intention and that intention brings a result, that magic, that is magic. You see, and that is a beautiful thing because, and also the alchemist is another variation and the guru is another variation of this same archetype. And I will be discussing all of them, but what is the shaman? Well, the chaman is a beautiful archetype because he's the one who healed himself and therefore now is healing the world. The chaman is the one that can communicate with spirits. The chaman is the one that can help the tribe or the community or the group to heal as a collective to not lose the perspective of the sacred. The chaman is the one that help them to see the future, to see the good fortune, to make the rain fall. Also the rainmaker, notice the rainmaker, this is another variation of this archetype. Maybe in the future, I will also do an episode of the rainmaker. The chaman is the one that can dominate plants, elements, animals, spirits, darkness, demons, in order to do this exceptional 
an important or imperative or essential work? The chaman is the one that can navigate between the underworld and the normal world. And the chaman finally is yourself. You are the chaman. The direct challenge in this episode is that you understand that you are a chaman. Now, by understanding that, it will not mean that you will be activating the chaman in you. You, you should do cer certain things. You should uh, follow a map in order to activate this thing in yourself, this archetype. So now what I will be discussing is 12 essential traits or characteristics of the chaman that if you do this, Right. If you follow these 12 elements, you will be activating the chaman in you or in yourself. So, and you may ask Derek, but who will benefit of activating this archetype? Well, everyone. But if you're a psychologist, you will benefit at all, uh, very much. Uh, if you are a medical like a doctor, medical doctor, as well you will benefit because you will not be only curing people, healing people with biological and chemical and pharmacological means, but also with spiritual natures. Um, if you're a counselor, if you're a social worker, if you're a politician in real life, this will be very good for you because the politician, it should be the chairman of the community. You know, if they notice, if the politician, if the president of the United States, he doesn't have this archetype uh, activated, he's corrupted. He doesn't heal the nation. Right. And notice most politicians, they don't are, they are not chairmans. They don't have this energy of healing. They are only thinking about policies, corruption, um, power, money, how they can hide their secrets, how they can win the next election. They don't have this archetype activated. Most of them, some of them maybe, but most of them, nah. But if you're a politician, you can be the difference. If you're an influencer in social media, oh my God, this is definitely one that you want to activate because every content that you produce to social media Is a device for healing or for destruction, right? Maybe you're a comedian. Every joke that you do in social media, you can heal through that joke or you can destroy with that joke. So if you're a social media uh, as well, uh, if you're a marketer, if you're a seller, this may be very helpful for you. If you're a spiritual leader in a church, in a community, if you are a guru, if you are a tarot reader, definitely you should be activating the chairman, right? What else? If you're an artist, oh my God, definitely activate this. You will bring your art to a new level if you become the chairman in your art. So everyone can benefit But if you are in a business that is very oriented to help people directly, like human resources, stuff like that, maybe if you are an athlete as well, because you will be in contact with a lot of people, well, the chairman may be a good archetype. And let me just bring one more point about uh, the athletes. You know, um, for example, the boxer or the martial artist, you should be activating this, this archetype because conflict in a sport, because you know sports like boxing, they are just a representation of what is conflict. And conflict means union as well. It's a very harsh, raw manner to unite consciousness. People are fighting in order to unite. That is what is happening. It's the same with sex. 
So if you're a boxer and you're only thinking about destroying your opponent, you are not integrated as a boxer. But if you're a chaman boxer, I mean by that a boxer that you have a very solid spiritual nature and you, you have activated this part of you, you will be boxing and you will be boxing with the intention of uniting with your opponent and you are will and you will unite with your opponent by knocking him out it's not like you will hug him and kiss him no but you will have that intention of love while you are fighting and that is a whole new level of fighting and that you know for more of that when i discuss art uh, martial arts a lot in this podcast and in other episodes or videos uh you will know about about uh that um that more but right now i am still very early in my process of martial arts i am not an expert so i am in my journey so that is for the future now let's go right into the 12 traits of the chairman for you to activate this energy in your life so the first one is that the chairman has a period of initiation and this is very 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 important and this period of initiation is full of suffering and what we can call insanity or craziness and this is my problem with people over medicating what they call psychotic patients Because what we call today psychotic or schizophrenic patients, back in the day, they were prospects to become the chaman. And there is a good article about it. It's from, I think, the year 1972. It's a very old research paper from Terence McKinnon. And um, and it is and it's called maybe it is if you just Google you can download the PDF. It's like five pages long. It's not too long, and it is called schizophrenia and shamanism, something like that. Schizophrenia and shamanism. Go and read that if you want more information about this. But the huge deal is that people that used to have visions to see things that other people cannot or hear things that other people could not hear back in the day, they were probably uh, initiated as the chairman of the community. And then they had a prestigious role in the community and they were fine after that. And they became not only productive citizens, but essential citizens of that community. Notice the difference now in modern age or modern times. Now, if you start hearing things or seeing things, what people do, oh my God, man, you are crazy. You need to go to the psychiatrist, right? What the psychiatrist do? Oh, that is a defect in your brain. You have a dopamine uh, syndrome. You have an abnormal dopamine production that is frying your brain, that is fucking, fucking up your brain. You need antipsychotics. So they put these pills on people that basically shut down their brain. And yes, yeah, sometimes they, you know, the pills shut down the visions, shut down uh, the extrasensual experiences but also they shut down the soul and they shut down the spirit and the drive and the motivation and the essence of the person. And then these persons, these patients, now they are not persons, they are patients of a capitalistic system that will exploit them. That is very sad. And now that, now that I'm a clinical psychologist in 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 you know in Puerto Rico and in the United States I'm licensed in Puerto Rico now that I'm in the other side I can see the shadow of the capitalistic system in mental health in which this system is built for you to be fuck up 
in order to exploit you as a resource, as a capitalistic asset. Because if you can be crazy, you know, crazy, well, they can charge your health insurance forever. And this is a negative cycle for you. You become a product of the mental health system. And that is so wrong. Like I am destroyed. I am personally destroyed by this truth. Like I didn't know this. No one teach you, teach you this in university. No one. Who will say that? Who will accept that, that the mental health industry is corrupt? No one will say it. You need to you know, be in this industry or maybe you're a patient and you will realize that it is so corrupt. And I don't know if, if it is like this in any country, in all the countries, uh, but at least in Puerto Rico and in United States, it's like this. Now, I am not saying that we are all bad. Yeah, we, ha we have some things good, like we have good mental health services. We help people. You know, meds, medication works well. Sometimes it is needed. Sometimes we save people's lives. And yes, we have good things, but we have a shadow also. We have a darkness like everyone else, but we are not recognizing our darkness. We are not doing nothing to, to heal our darkness as an industry. I'm sorry that I am going to this route, Uh, I know that maybe I am like uh, going in a different route, but this is so important because maybe you have a diagnosis of schizophrenia and what you are really is a shaman. And you are taking your antipsychotic and you are burning your shamanic powers down. Now, the problems is not the visions and what you hear. The problem is your ego that your ego cannot tolerate those and those elements, those what we can call hallucinations, but let's say that they are not hallucinations, that they are just extra sensual experiences or paranormal or parapsychological experiences, you know, they, they are good if your ego is able to digest them and to give them a different meaning that actually helps you to heal and helps you to heal the world. And that's why I love the Junjang psychology because the Junjang psychology, they are not perfect, but one thing that they consider is the material of hallucination as a attempt of the psyche to heal itself. You know, in the Jungian psychology, they use dreams, the content of dreams, the content of fantasies, the content of psychedelic experiences, the content of meditations, the content of altered state of consciousness and hallucinations. They use that content, whatever you are seeing or perceiving or whatever you can draw in art as the route, the route for your healing sometimes. Some Junyan psychologists, they don't know, as, you know, they, they are more corrupted as well. And they don't use the, uh, do this anymore. But back in the day, specifically Carl Jung, he, he did it. He did it a lot. He was a shaman himself. Like if you read the Red Book, and this is one of the most profound shamanic works of all time. Let me share my screen real quick. If you're watching my screen in the my YouTube channel or maybe on the Spotify channel, just, just watch this. If you go and you search Red Book Card June, and this the original version cost $200, but you can you can buy uh, a more a more kind of a a more kind of a um a cheaper version that is like $30 on Amazon. And I recommend this book for all people. Like this book is about drawings. And look this, look these images. 
This is shamanic images, folks. Look this image. This image is basically what in shamanism is called the axis mundi, the connection between the underworld and the real world or the, you know, average world. Look this one. So the book is like this. It has literature in it, but a lot of images because he was an alchemist and he was a shaman. Look at this one. So yeah, buy that book. Maybe this book will awake some things in you that you don't know they exist. Look this one. This is obviously the archetype of the shaman, the self, the magician, the healer. All right. So when the shaman is hallucinating or seeing things, people in the tribe used to know he's ready. He's ready to become one of us. And they train them. They train to use that as a power for healing. They didn't say, man, you're crazy. Oh, man, you need to go to a psychiatrist. Oh, man, you will be nothing in your life. You need antipsychotic medication for life. They didn't say that. They say, oh, you are. You will become a master. You will become the master of plants, the master of animals, the master of spirits. Just notice the difference. So that is the initiation of the archetype. In other words, the shaman is a wounded healer. The shaman was first wounded. And therefore, now he can heal because he healed himself. He healed through his own blood, through, him, through his own suffering. The shaman used his suffering to became the healer. That's so powerful. And you can do that. You can do that. The next characteristic is that the shaman do not only help himself, but also help and heal the community. This is very, very important because a lot of people, they, they go and they start their healing journey, but they are very focusing on themselves, very focused on themselves. And the whole point of healing is to heal the whole multiverse not only to heal yourself. So the shaman carries this responsibility in his shoulders. The shaman knows that this internal work that he's doing is only actualized when he can help the sick, the weak, people that are in need. Because the shaman knows that when he is helping and healing another person, he's healing a part of himself. He's not healing a separated entity. He's healing himself. Because the shaman know that everything is infinitely interconnected and everything is one. So don't become the healer that has a big, massive ego that doesn't want to help people when they talk to you about their problems, about their pain. Listen to them. Help them. Give them advice. Give them your spirit, your soul, your wisdom. Now, be very careful that you don't depend of this feeling of, you know, ah, I am healing people for, the, the, for be the shaman. Also, the shaman is not dependent on this. He do it with responsibility, but he do not depend on this to feel that he has a purpose. So it's a good balance between healing others, but at the same time, not needing to heal others. For example, uh, 
Sometimes, you know, in our psychology industry, we see some psychologists that they need to work with patients, like they need that. And if they are not working with patients, they become crazy. And when they are working with patients, they prefer to put the patient first in every aspect of their life. They die for their patients. That is not good. They are not balanced. The balanced psychologist slash shaman, he wants to help the patient. He loves that. Maybe his life purpose. But if the patient do not want to be healed, or if the patient is toxic or anti-ethical, the psychologist will know, proceed further. He knows, he's supposed to know the boundary. He's not needy. He's not dependent on the patient, right? But a lot of psychologists are unbalanced in this way. So be a balanced psychologist slash shaman. It's a very important thing. The next characteristic is that the chaman appreciate the soul of the world. What we can call the anima mundi, or we can call also the axis mundi. Oh, sorry, no, the axis mundi, no. Uh, what we can call the vitalism of the world. And by this, I mean the chaman lives in a world in which everything is alive. Even inorganic matter is alive for the chaman. Now, if you're a scientist, this will make no sense because you say, no, but how can that be? You know, it's, you know a book is not alive. A rock is not alive. This, this sticky note is not alive, direct. You are alive. But that bunny that you have as a logo is not alive, right? Well, the chaman thinks everything has a soul and therefore everything is alive. Everything. Even... Material, uh, fecal material is a life for the chairman. And by being alive, they can communicate with everything. They can communicate with trees, with leaves, with clouds, with rain, with frogs, with tears, with blood, with earth, with air, with sounds, with imaginations. They can communicate with everything and they can decipher information from everything. So they can take advice from a rock. That's so cool, right? And you may say, that sounds crazy. Yes, it sounds yeah, very crazy. But it's truth. It's truth for them. And when you are in need of a chairman, you will believe what he tells you and he may be you know, speaking with a rock. But what rock tells to him is going to be the most awesome, extraordinary truth that you can hear in your life. How you can explain that? Well, we cannot explain that too well scientifically, but philosophically, we can explain it like, well, everything is conscious. Everything is alive. So the chaman has this capacity to decipher information from every aspect, dimension, or node of consciousness of assistance. You know, the chaman, you cannot blame the chaman for this if you cannot do this. And this is the problem with modern people, modern medical men, modern psychologists, and, you know, modern average people. Like they say, because I cannot do that, or because I cannot put this in a study, in a scientific method, it is not real. That is just wrong. Not every truth will be able to be um, 
matching or fixed or resolved through a scientific method because scientific method is partial and truth is absolute. So always the scientific method will fall short in an aspect of the universe. That's why we don't know about anything with the scientific method. Like we don't know a lot. We know a lot, but we don't know a lot. We cannot do a theory of everything. We cannot know the nature of the universe. We cannot understand why a particle and a wave is the same thing in quantum physics. We cannot know the uh, body and mind problem of psychology. We can, we, we, in neurology, we cannot uh, know the nature of consciousness or even what consciousness is. We cannot know how to cure HIV. We, we don't know a lot. We don't know what a black uh, hole is. We don't know how many universes exist. We don't know how many planets they are. We don't know how many galaxies. Even when we are supposed to be very advanced scientifically, we don't know a lot. So the chaman, he doesn't need the scientific method. He can speak with a rock. But you cannot do it, and therefore you think he's nuts. He's not nuts. He's just doing another method. If you can learn this method, maybe you will understand why he do it. So learn to appreciate the soul of the world. Learn to see the aliveness in everything. And maybe you will become the chairman one day. Also, the chairman is spiritual animals. This is very important. He used totems and he used masks and he used spiritual animals' noises. For example, if he's connecting with the dog, he will start barking. If he's connecting with the snake, he will start doing the snake noise. He will uh, bring his tongue out. If he's connecting with a wolf, he will like, oh, he will do like the animal because he's not imitating the animal by the way. He is the animal in that instant. He's connecting with the energy of an animal because every animal has a certain power. We call that power animals. And I have an episode on this. It's on Spanish and it is called Como Descubrir Tu Animal Espiritual. Como Descubrir Tu Animal Espiritual. Búscalo en mi YouTube or Spotify. And... This is one of the most potent techniques of the chaman. And in my personal life, I became very interested in chamanism because I was working with spiritual animals. And then I, I realized, oh, this is part of the chaman journey. And then I you know, start studying the chaman or reading about it and meditating about it and activating this force on my, on my life. So if you want to be a chaman, first thing, you need to understand what is your spiritual animal the most prominent. Because this is the thing. You are all the animals at the same time. You are the whole legion of animals. You are the whole realm. But you have one animal that is kind of your core. It's kind of your astrological principal sign. Right? And also in certain stages of your life, because you're a dynamic being, you will have other animals that will bring to your consciousness, that will appear, that will flourish in your consciousness. And they, and they come to teach you something. But if you don't listen, you will never be able to work with this aspect of spirituality. And I cannot go with all the details on how to do it, But this is maybe a research that you can do for your own if you don't know Spanish and you cannot listen to my podcast about it. Also, the chaman use plants and other natural resources to cure the world. This includes psychedelics and other elements as fire, 
uh, water, air, earth, and the uh, quintessence. I have a whole mini series on Spanish about these elements. It is called Los Cinco Elementos. Mini serie. Derek Israel, Los Cinco Elementos. Watch that mini series. If you can understand Spanish, you will learn so much about it. But for example, if you see in a movie The Chaman, right? The magician, whatever. Sometimes they are looking at fire when they see the visions. Well, they are working with the fire element. Sometimes you see, you see the chairman that he becomes an eagle and start flying. Well, you can understand that they became air. They are navigating through air. That uh, through air. That means that they are navigating in the spirit, in the logos, in the psyche, in the mind, in the thoughts. That is air. Or maybe you see that they bring rain down. Like they can make rain that is a symbol of they are working with the water element the emotions the intuition element or maybe you see them connecting with a tree or becoming a tree or becoming a root that is earth the symbol the symbolism of materialization cementation of a psychological spiritual reality to bring the abstract to the tangible through the spectrum of manifestation and consciousness. Also, the chairman used plants for healing and psychedelics as well. And they use psychedelics like they can lick a frog, for example, or they can do the ayahuasca or they can, uh, you know, do certain things because With this superpower that psychedelics bring, uh, they can get into an altered state of consciousness and for them will be easier to navigate in the underworld. And navigating in the underworld, they can do their spiritual mechanics and their spiritual operations because they believe in shamanism that this world is full of spirits and spirits are patterns, patterns of existence. And if you can go to the code of the existence, if you can go to the base pattern of existence and you can hack that, then you can hack reality. It's a very good metaphor with software. If you can, you know, hack the code, you can hack what will be displayed in your computer, right? The code determines what will be shown in your computer and how your computer is working and stuff like that. Well, it's the same, but the code is the spirit in the shamanic world. They can become the code itself and then they can use the computer. You understand? They are the coders of reality in a spiritual sense. And psychedelics help them to do this faster It is not that they cannot do it without psychedelics. They can do it. But psychedelics is like a short route, like route. Like they can do it faster with psychedelics. Also, the chaman is the one who travels the world without moving his feet. This is very important. And you can say, how the hell he do it without using his feet? Well, he traveled the world by using his soul. Have you ever heard about out-of-body experiences? Well, a good movie about this. I just recently watched this movie and I believe it's the, my, favorite, my favorite movie of all time. Please watch this movie. You will become a better shaman if you watch this movie. It is called Enter the Void. You can watch it online. Enter the Void. And in this movie, it's about out-of-body experiences. I will not spoil you the movie. But you will understand what the shaman do by watching this movie. But basically they can navigate the world without using their body. They are in a trance and their spirit is everywhere. 
wherever they want. They can they can travel in an astral way. In an astral journey. When you when you are dreaming, you are navigating also without using your, your feet, right? Your legs. But the chaman, he doesn't need to sleep to do this. He can do this awake in an altered state of consciousness. And you may say, why? Well, because he manipulates reality this way. Like if he needs to uh, speak with the elephant, for example, and he's in a place where elephants are not there, well, he can go to alter state of consciousness. He can travel to Africa and maybe he's on Peru, but he can go to Africa and he can speak with an elephant there in a spiritual sense and he can bring the information back to his body and then he can, you know, speak his truth help people and do whatever he's going to do with that information. That is just one example. Or maybe he can travel to Mars or to Pluto or to another multiverse as well and fight dragons and fight demons and fight evil forces there. Yes, it sounds like a fantasy, but it's only a fantasy when you are not a shaman. That's the truth. Also, the chaman is the one who benefits from the total interconnection of the shamanic web. The shamanic web is a very beautiful term that is referring to the unus mundus of the world. And the unus mundus is the same term, but in alchemy. In philosophy, it's the known dual aspect of the world. In the Hindu, system is the interpenetration aspect of the world. In the Buddhism is Nirvana, aka when everything is one and you are in peace with that. In Christianity is Christ consciousness or heaven or salvation. In the chakras philosophy or yogi philosophy, is the universal chakra, the crown chakra, when you finally become one with everything. So just notice, every system has like a concept for this truth of reality that basically means that everything is one. So by manipulating an element of reality, you are manipulating all the elements of reality. In science, this is called the non-local aspect of reality or non-local aspect of the quantum mechanics or the superposition of the electron. So there's different terms for the same idea of interconnectedness. And the chaman, he's not only aware of this, but he knows that he, in his body, he's all of these connections. He's the microcosm. That is a term in the Asian philosophy. The microcosm or the micro orbit or the microcosmic is micro because it's in you, but at the, at the same way is the cosmos itself. A good uh, example is like, imagine that if you can go and zoom in in your body and to see closer and closer and closer to your body, when you are seeing very, very close to your body, to your body, to your body, you will appear in the whole cosmos because the cosmos and the body is the same. And if you can zoom in in the cosmos, like if you go and zoom in in the universe and zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, then you will start seeing your hands and your face And you will see yourself because you are the universe as well. That is like a good, a good thought experiment for illustrating this point. Also, the chaman is the one who is not afraid to use the light 
and light. I have a whole episode about this. And this one finally is on English. And it is called Luminosity. What is spiritual light? That is one of the most important episodes that you will listen in your life. But light is the substance of magic. Is this magnetism of change in the infrastructure of reality. And the chaman can use light to heal people. He can use energy. He can use Reiki. He can use light in form of tarot reading, in form of, in form of a divination. He can foresee the future. He can speak tongues. All of that is manipulation of light. Because the chaman knows that he not use light, he is light. Notice the difference. It's a huge difference. He don't say use light. He's not a flashlight. He's the light itself. He's the photon itself. He's the unit of light itself. The unit of God itself. Light is a synonym of God. The chaman is God. God is the ultimate chaman. Also, the chaman used chamanic drums to enter in a state of trance. If you want to know what is chamanic drums, just go to YouTube and look or search from uh, for chamanic drumming. And it's music. It's like that. It's like a music like, oh my God. Like you, you go to a deep trance with that music. And they use deep sounds like, oh. If you are in my uh, course about how to become ultimate integrity, that is my most profound course on DerekIsrael.com. One of the things that I do in this course, in that course, is I call shamanic sessions in which I become a shaman. I channel a shaman. And I help you to become integrous, whole, complete as a human being. That is going to be the most potent thing that you will do spiritually in your life. But using shamanic drumming and philosophy and inspiration and um, performance and art. So do know if you are in that course. If you are not in that course, enroll today. That will be the best decision of your life. It's on DerekIsrael.com, the way to your ultimate integrity. That is one of my best courses. And, um, and the chaman used this type of music. The chaman used what is called music healing or sound healing. And I will be discussing more about this in the future because I'm studying really deeply right now how you sound, how to use sound for healing. And it's amazing, this area. It's amazing. Right? And... Um, And the chaman used the drums, also sings and dance. This is a very important thing for the chaman, dancing. So I believe that this is the way in which the chaman also integrates the lover's archetype. El arquetipo del amante. And you know that if you want to become a king, you need to integrate the, uh, the lover, the warrior, the magician, And now the king. And I have an episode about that. That it is called King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. Those are the four archetypes for the perfect male manifestation. That is more for men. But also I have the woman episode about it. Uh, if you go and you watch um, the female archetypes. Just watch, just uh, search Derek Israel female archetypes. And uh, I have an episode with Crystal Madrid. She's, she's a psychologist an artist, and she studied archetypes and she brought the subject because I didn't know too much about it. She brought the subject with me of female archetypes. So you have to study. You have resources, man. 
So also the shaman is the one who supports and powers the leader of the community and in his most actualized form becomes the leader of the community. So in most movies or stories, you will see that the king is not the shaman. He always need the shaman to bring information to him. Or when he's confused, he goes to the shaman. That's why, that's, that is because the, the king is not integrated yet. He needs another person to tell his fortune, to do his magic. The real king, he doesn't need the shaman. He is the shaman. And also the real shaman is the king. So when the shaman, he doesn't want to lead his people. And a lot of shamans, they are kind of, ah, I don't want to lead. I prefer to be alone, you know, in solitude. I don't want to do politics. I don't want to lead war. You know, most shamans are like that because they are not actualized completely. The actualized completely shaman, the whole archetype, it also is the king. He becomes the king. He leads the community. He not only heals the community, he leads the community. He becomes the king. But that is when the shaman and the king finally reach their final stage of integration. So if you want to become the shaman, first heal, heal yourself. Second, heal other people. And then lead them, become a leader for becoming the ultimate shaman. Also, the shaman is not afraid of demons or dark forces. The shaman eats them like breakfast as if they were eggs with bacon. Yeah. Like if you're afraid of a demon, you cannot be a shaman. The shaman eats demons, literally eats them. You know, I, I always tell my the story of my grandmother in Puerto Rico. She was a witch. And um, one of the stories uh, that my father told me is that she ate demons. Like people possessed demonically went to her house and she ate them and then throw, throw them up. Like, bleh, the demons. Can you imagine that? I cannot do that. <laughs> like... Yes, I'm a chairman a little bit. I'm a psychologist, but my grandmother, I, I want to connect more with her. She's dead. Um, but she, she, she was a thing. Like, oh my God. But yeah, that is very common with chamans. They can eat demons. They can eat dark forces. They can eat evil. And that is a representation of digesting egos, digesting traumas metabolizing suffering. So you cannot be afraid of demons anymore if you want to be a shaman. You need to dominate demons. Now you are understanding the power of the shaman, huh? It's a powerful thing, huh? And finally, the shaman prefers solitude to do inner work. Yes, most of the time. So this is a difference between the witch and the shaman because the witch also is a, as a magical archetype. She prefers to be in a social circle. That's why if you see a movie of witches, they are together always, like in a circle of women that are witches or in a cult. The shaman, you will not see them all together being shamans. You will see one shaman in one cave alone very similar to the hermit in the tarot card but the chairman when he transcends he can you know go back to the community and he can become the king as i said he's the leader but before he's the leader he prefers solitude so if you want to activate this archetype be alone more If you are dependent of always be speaking with people, to be speaking with people in chat, in Messenger, in Instagram, in WhatsApp, you know, if you talk to me on WhatsApp, probably I will never answer you or I will answer you like two weeks later. I, I only answer to my wife immediately and to clients immediately. 
because obviously they are my clients, what I, what I will do. They are paying for that. But if you're a friend, and my friends know this and they don't like it, but hey, they accept me as I am. If you're a friend or maybe you are, you know, trying to chat with me, I will do it. I am not this guy that will never answer you. You know, I have empathy and I want to form your relationships and I'm open. But I will, I will wait a lot, not because I am proud of waiting or because I want to feel self-important. It's because I know that every time that I go and chat with someone or speak with someone, that is a cost of opportunity that I can be using to do my shamanic work, to do my inner work. So I will not waste that for anyone except my wife and my clients, not even my mother or my father. They some, Sometimes they, they need to wait days or hours sometimes because my father and my mother, you know, they are father and mother. So I, I am more with them. You know, I am more social with them. But with people like, because the, I'm the chairman, I need to do this. It's part of the journey. So be aware how social you are because the chairman needs solitude in order to concentrate its forces in the inner healing. And talking chat with people all day, that is not healing. That is distraction. So now, my friend, you know exactly what you need to do to activate this inner shaman and to heal the world. Remember, go to the reproduction list on my YouTube channel called Archetypes and to see if you can find another archetype that you are interested to activate in your mind. For me, this is, this is one of my favorite subjects. I will do this forever until I die. I, I love June. I love archetypes. And I study this and I incorporate this in my own life. So this is very natural for me. Also, leave a comment about, you know, what other thing you may think about to activate this archetype of what are your thoughts about it, share it with your friends, share it in the groups, share it in your social media. Also remember that we are on Patreon and you can support us. To um, You can donate $5 per month and you can basically power this podcast to continue transforming lives for free. The link is in the description. Also, we have a Telegram group in which we are discussing essential aspects of personal development and this podcast. So if you want to be more involved with me and people like you, join us. It's completely free. The link is in the description. And also remember that you can go to my spiritual guru service at DerekIsrael.com if you want to work profoundly, spiritually with your favorite doctor slash Chaman of all time, Derek.